Hello everybody, welcome to our very first episode of the Travelling Brush Dippers. Hi Denise, how are you today? I'm good, thank you Sharon, how are you? I'm lovely, thank you. I'm looking forward to this. Um, yes. For everybody who's uh, not aware, this is our very first vlog. Brush Dippers are Sharon Hurst and Denise Allen. And um, we're both snuggled down. Weather's a bit dodgy outside, isn't it? What's it like your neck of the woods? We had snow yesterday. It's stopped now. Um, but we um, have got a couple of inches on the ground out there. I've got my wood burner going. I am toasty warm. Um, I've got my coffee and I'm ready for a good chat. Oh, lovely. Are you in your studio, presumably, are you? Yes. Yeah, I'm in the workspace in my studio mm. upstairs where all the mess and all the mayhem takes place. What about you? Where are you? I'm in my studio. Um, it, it's not as flashy as yours. For everybody's information, Denise has got this lovely studio. It's It has a mezzanine level with the stairs up through the middle of it. So downstairs she has her wood burner and upstairs this beautiful gallery. And um, I'm not talking art gallery, I'm talking gallery um, to walk around. So that's really rather beautiful. As for me, I'm in my son's ex-bedroom. When he left, I couldn't get in here fast enough to turn it into my studio. So we're both settled and comfortable. I've got my coffee too. And the plan for today, for our very, very first vlog, we want to talk to you about something extremely special that Denise did back in January, although the story goes back a lot further than that. It actually sure. started last year, didn't it? So Denise, yes. tell us, what was the show? When did it all start and when was the transmission? Let's start with the transmission first. When did it go out? The transmission went out uh, on the 20th of January, I believe my episode went out, uh, and the show was Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year. Um, I oh, didn't... so exciting, weren't we? it, it is so exciting. It was such a lovely day. Um, we had an amazing day, and we're just going to talk through how, where, why, and what, really. Absolutely. So, so take us right from the very, very, very beginning. How did you hear of it? And what inspired you to have a go? Where was it advertised? What happened? Where did you find it? I think I saw something go past on Facebook, I believe. Um, I, was, I was racking my brains trying to remember where I'd, I'd started um, the process. And I'm fairly certain I saw something go past on Facebook because I've, I've followed their Facebook page. So the, the advert came up. Um, and it was probably, ooh, what would I say, mid-lockdown 2020 that I saw the advert and I thought, mm -hmm. am I going ahead? You know, it was, it was, I think I probably applied in about April. Mm -hmm. And I think their process was applications are now open, fingers crossed we can go ahead. And that, that was kind of, it was never advertised as we're definitely doing this, it's we're hoping to do this. Um, so I put my application in. Why did I choose to do it? I think I was stuck at home and I, I wanted an adventure. Um, and it sounded like it would be an adventure to me. Um, sitting there, you know, going out. I had taken part about five years ago. Um, didn't get anywhere. And I just thought, mm, I don't know, I don't know. But it was a really good day. So when I saw this pop up, I thought, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply. You can be an amateur artist, professional artist. There's there's no rules on it. You just have to send in your application and choose a photograph of one of your paintings to apply with your submission piece. Um, and that's really where it all started. Have you got a photograph of your submission piece? Can we have a look? Oh, the submission piece. Do you know what? And again, I've put this into my blog. I've written a blog about all of this on my website. Um, I can't remember what I sent in. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those impulsive applications. It was like bang, 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 bang on the screen. Off it went. No idea what I sent in. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. They didn't okay. like it, obviously. I thought, so I didn't get through. I thought you were deadly marked in your memory, so obviously not. <laughs> well, you know what my oh, work wow. is like. It's so varied. I didn't, you know, I, I have 
collage pieces and landscapes and seascapes and you know I've got a bit of all of that going on and I I don't remember what I sent in fair enough fair enough I've got a <laughs> list of questions here I'm just working my way through so excuse me if I if my eyes sort of um you know uh slide off to the side that's all right um, when, when you've done that how did they get in touch with you and um did it take very long because from experience we all get so many wretched um emails saying you know you've won this and you've got that and the, the fear is always that you'd come across an email like that and think oh well, that's rubbish and get rid of it mm -hmm. so you know ha what happened who got in touch with you the production company gets in touch with you um, and I had an email from them saying sadly this time you have not been successful in, in becoming a participant on the show because um, first of all the applications are for the people who are in the pods so okay. you've got the six painters in the pods each each episode so that's what you're applying to take part in and they email you back and say eh, no not quite um, but what they do say is applications for the wild card will be taking and they give you a time and a date when the wild card applications will go live. So I made a note of that and um, decided to just go for the wild card and just see what happened. Oh, good for you. Good yeah. for you. So when, um, I mean, what, what happened? How, did you have to keep it secret because we didn't know you didn't tell us and you know <laughs> I, it was such a surprise and a shock You're, oh my god Denise can be on telly so did you did they tell you that you had to be quiet and not tell anyone what they do is I, I, we do have to sign various forms and things when you when you take part that you're not going to reveal who the winner of the episode okay. was and all of that kind of stuff um, but what they do is they ask you not to put information out on your own personal social media until the time of the show going live. So once once the show's out there, then they're more than happy for you to, to share it around. But up until that point, they'd rather you, you know, didn't mention it. So I just kind of thought, well, I know what I'm like. If I start telling people, I'll tell everybody. <laughs> so, well, it's um, interesting, isn't it? unusual so yes yeah That's so you kind of kept kept it under wraps but when the time came when the the point came for taking part in the wild card um it is very much more a case of first come first served so you know it, it's not a case of being selected for the wild cards it's just a case of there's so many oh. places and once once they're full then you know that that's it so i'm not special so if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe from what I've watched, there were 50 on the day, 50 wild cards. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't sure how it was going to run because um, in all the bumps they sent out about the wild cards because of the fact that we were just coming out of COVID. Um, some episodes were going to have 50, which my episode did. And some episodes were only going to have 30, depending on the location and the space that they had for the wild cards to go. So, oh, fair uh, enough. yeah, it wasn't it wasn't sort of, you know, a set number, but I know in traditionally they've had 50. I'm with you, because, of course, if they're in a smaller venue, they've got to think about the distancing, haven't they, between the participants? Yes. Yeah. 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 No so we were all had you, to have masks. To... Oh, did you what? You took them with you? Yeah, we all had to have them with us. But once we were sat in our places, we didn't have to wear them. But obviously, when you were. You know moving around the crew and and different things you was you we, we put the masks on and we had to try yeah. and position ourselves so that we were sat a certain distance apart so yes yeah numbers mattered because of course if they've got too many people and the venue isn't large enough you could potentially land up with dis social distancing around the back behind the trees not seeing the, the yeah you know the main event at all couldn't you so yes. that makes sense yeah. Oh, fair enough. OK, so you settled yourself. I mean, um, what were your preparations for the day? What did you take? How did you decide what you wanted to take with you? How did you decide, you know, what was important? Ugh, it was such a difficult one because um, in this instance, because of social distancing and all the rest of it, they weren't able to give you any assistance getting your stuff to the painting site. 
and the painting sites are normally ooh, a good sort of half a mile to a mile from the field that they make you park in. So you had to be completely self-sufficient. There was going to be no cafes open, no nowhere to go and get a drink. Uh, the toilets would be open, but again, there were special rules about, you know, going in and out and all the rest of it. Um, you had to have everything with you. You had to have your food, your drink, your chair, your painting equipment, any easels you wanted. You had to make sure that you had the lot with you and be able to um, carry it along, you know, with you from, from the side. I, I would say we were about just over half a mile from where we parked to where we set up. Um, so how did I decide what to take? I kind of took a bit of everything. Um, I had a trolley that I was wheeling along. Um, so yeah, I took a bit of everything. I've got a quite a comfy chair, paint, outdoor painting chair that's got those little tables, you know, the little bits yeah. that fold out at the side. Um, thankfully, we had really good weather. Because yes. on the day, if you'd have had to take... Um, you know wet weather gear as well then it would have been a nightmare in fact what i can do i can show you uh let me have a look i'm just looking for a picture here to show you but i can't find there we go can you see that oh yes indeed yeah now this is so us all walking from where we parked down to the site. So let me bring you back. back so what the did they do? Um, you know, what, what were your timings for the day? What time did you get up? How long was the journey? Where did you have to go? Um, and did they get all the wild cards together before they, they had you all walk off down there? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us, tell us what happened from the time you got up. What time did you have to get up to prepare and to travel? stupid o'clock but um yes it was um where it was west wickham park in buckinghamshire so it's about a two yeah. and a half hour drive from me uh i got up i do you know what? i can't even remember what time i got it was probably about four in the morning um and so oh. we had to be at site at seven in the morning so oh it's not gosh. like a nice okay. 10 a.m start or something like that so set off um, and it was a glorious day I have to say it was a beautiful drive down we were easing out of lockdown at the time lockdown one at the time um, so you know very little traffic on the roads beautiful morning uh, we got to site um, you had to register so what they have to do is you get there and you have to take your painting surface, so your picture, your canvas, your paper, whatever it is, and get them to stamp the back of it so that they can look at it and check that it's a blank canvas. So you haven't sort of cheated and pre-done something. Okay, yeah. So you have to register your canvas and sign these disclaimers that you're not going to reveal anything before the show. Um, and then you have to load up and get ready to go so you know but they made made us wait until everybody was there and registered and then they moved us on mass um down to the painting side which was a field around the other side of the lake from where the pods were okay so you weren't actually with and behind the pod people you were somewhere quite different yes yeah okay. we were around the other side of the lake now can I? I'm gonna. So that means you got you had a completely different view to it to everybody else, didn't you? Really? Yes, I think we had a better view. Actually, I think we had a better view. Okay. Um, okay. So I can show you where we were. Let's have a little look for this. Hang on a second. That's how far away we were from the pods. Bear with me. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. I was quite impressed with those pods. I thought they were fantastic. I'd like one of those for the garden. Yeah, absolutely. Paint outside. I think they're absolutely fab fabulous things. I've never seen anything like them before. Good yeah. idea. Yes. Although I suppose that realistically, if the wind was blowing, you'd, you'd still get wet in the rain, wouldn't you? And wind, you had a windy day, didn't you? I was quite surprised that the, you know, it's yeah. sunny, but it was really windy because I noticed people's things were blowing away. Yes. So yeah, somewhere. It was what, gusty more um, than continuous though. 
no fair dues yes so but it mean it does mean that you have to keep your eye on what you've got doesn't it because you do uh, presumably you stuck your your pit your main picture down so I that stuck the picture down little... but I, I think my easel blew over two or three times during the oh, day gosh. nightmare <laughs> like I that... blew towards me not into the lake because I was sat right <laughs> by the lake so you could have landed up wearing some of it as well yes oh, dear. um I've done the timings and the journey. Were you nervous? Were you nervous at all? Not really, because I wasn't in the pods. I wasn't even sure if anybody was going to talk to me or if, um, yeah, I, I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. Do you know what I mean? It, it mm. I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Um, so I just kind of went, do you know what? I'll just go for it. Go with it. Yeah. And along there. Lines. I mean, were the production team helpful before you, when you settled down or before you went on site, did they explain to you the process of the day and make it clear and, and reassure you and, and settle you? Yeah, I got to chatting to some of the production team whilst we were waiting for everybody to gather. Um, and they had had one hell of a time trying to get everything together um, so that it was COVID safe we met all the rules, they could still get a TV programme out of it, you know, it, juggling all of those different things that they needed to do had been a nightmare for them. And I think they'd had a very long few days setting everything up. But I have to say they were amazing. They were so lovely, yeah. so friendly, um, chatting to me, you know, and, and to everybody. Um, but, you know, just really putting everybody at ease, saying, you know, if you've got any questions, if you're not sure how this works, just ask. They were fabulous. Oh, excellent. I must admit, every time I've ever had anything to do with TV, I've found that to be the case, no matter who the production team are. They are so slick, aren't they? They know exactly they just know their job. Don't they just? Yeah, I must admit. So, so here's a shout out to all those production teams out there. Whoever you are, we think you're quite brilliant, really. So, yeah, yes. I agree with you. Yeah. Um. So, did... What time um, did you actually get to your pitch and how did you decide where you wanted to go? I mean, did you have the chance to mill about or was it literally a case of just thinking, I'm here and before these other 49 people grab everything, I'm going to stick here. Um, and then, they, you know, how, how did you decide what, where you were going to go? It was a bit of both. When we pulled up and sort of walked up into the, the field that we were at, um, we were by the lake. Uh, I had this view um, that started out of the boat shed, which was opposite. Um, it's a little tumble down boat shed with a couple of sort of uh, rowing boats in it. I thought it looked amazing. So I plonked myself and all my stuff down on the side of the lake and thought right well this is a good spot um and it was quite a warm day so it was in sort of semi-shade at that point under a tree so I thought yeah this oh, is going to be quite comfortable um so I then put my stuff down and then I had a wander around and I thought well, if I find a better place <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll move but I didn't yeah. I was quite happy with where I was uh but there was quite a lot of different views because we had across the lake to the boat house there was the Doric building that the contestants all had to, to paint. They were all pointed at that and they only had really one choice because they were facing one way towards yeah. the lake and towards this building. So they didn't really have a choice in what they painted. Um, then we had, um, but we had the boathouse, the Doric. If you turned around, there was a big sort of walkway, grass sort of walkway that led up to an old another building of some sort there was all the trees there was really strong shadows there was the lake the lake edge so we actually I think we had a better position than the um pod artists myself well that's brilliant isn't it so you were lucky so there was yeah. no argy bargy pushing and shoving and people deciding <laughs> nobody got pushed they in the no. <laughs> <laughs> no not really and again I think everybody was hyper aware of the social distancing thing so yes. you know I didn't have anybody with me but you were allowed to take a friend along to help you transport stuff and have a, a companion oh, with you okay. on the day um but I just went by myself and um so yeah there were sort of like almost 
picnic tables all around, picnic blankets spread out with partners sat on there reading a book and then all the paints and all oh, the nice. and everything else. So, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Because, you know, we both know from TV that sometimes they can be quite uptight about allowing other people in, can't they? So that's, that's yes. quite a nice. So yeah, social no. distancing had a benefit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, so what time did you actually set up? So if you got there for seven, what kind of time did you manage to, to set your pitch? Um, I think we been? probably got going by about ten. Um, oh, gosh. Three hours of hanging about then, really. Yeah, half nine, ten o'clock, something like that. And, and set up and as a wild card we didn't have quite the time constraints that the pod artists do have they have this four hour time limit um but once they set us up about 10 o'clock um they just went off you pop um and we did have an end time but it wasn't quite as you know timed and restricted as as the pod artist so um i would say we probably had until about three o'clock so we probably had about five hours all told oh that's excellent isn't it so although it sounds like a lot of hanging about in reality those three hours settle you don't they so it gives you ch a chance yeah. to to take in your surroundings settle calm down sort yourself out and and to be ready to go for it so that that's a good thing really yeah. I think yeah definitely yeah because um, um, by the good. time we we'd got there and and registered it was probably about an hour before they'd managed to register everybody so it's probably eight o'clock yeah. by the time they stamped everybody's pictures and you know um maybe even a little bit later it was probably half eight by the time we started moving off because once everybody was there and registered, I suppose we had to wait for anybody who was, you know, a bit late getting there as well. They had to wait till everybody was together. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, and then um, off we off we went, you know, en masse. And it was it wasn't a high speed, um, you know, run down the <laughs> run down the path to get to the pitch. <laughs> it was it was an amble because everybody had so much stuff with them. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I like the calmness of it because again, yeah. being used to live TV, everything's frenetic, isn't it? You know, we're we're accustomed to that, so it's nice. Yeah, three, to two, one, go. Feel that you're calm. <laughs> um, did you get to meet the presenters at all? I mean, who were they and what were they like? They the were actual lovely. presenters. Well, the presenters of the show were Joan Bakewell and Stephen Mangan, and we didn't get to meet them. And I suspect that was all down to part of the COVID rules. They didn't come and mingle with the um, wild cards at all. I, I don't know if that was down to rules or if they, they didn't come. But they certainly yeah. didn't come and talk over to me. But I did meet the judges. So, Denise, let's have a look at the judges. Have you got any photos? Yes. Bear with me a second. There we go. That's oh, me God. with Kathleen. Kathleen Soriano. Um, but there was Kathleen, okay. Kate Bryan, and Tyshan Scherenberg. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name. But they all came and chatted to us. Ty came and sat with me for a while. Let me come away from that. Um, so, yeah, Ty came and sat with me for, for a while and had a chat. I got filmed loads, but I managed really oh, successfully... Christmas. Um, to make the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and find something else for you. Just a second. See, this was. Um, let me. Oh, that's a good photo. Yes. Right. Let's make that bigger. Is that better? Oh, yeah, that's so that, a good photo. That's Ty talking to one of the other wild cards with the the crew all around. So. Um, and you can see there how sunny the day was. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. You were so lucky, weren't you, really? Oh, and you how? Were so lucky. Yes. Oh, dear. So going on to, you, uh, did you feel that you had enough time to paint? Or, or were you feeling, you know, oh, I could have done with another half an hour or? 
I, I felt comfortable with what I'd done. I set myself a challenge of doing one of my deconstruction, reconstruction pieces, which I'm sure we'll, we'll cover in a few minutes. But um, yeah, I decided to do about four or five paintings and then tear them up and paint them back together again, like you do when you're under pressure. <laughs> I have visions of you on your last artist demo days when you were doing the, the deconstruction and reconstruction. And yep. then we did the jingle for Christmas, didn't we? All yes. of us together. And then I had that beautiful image of you just throwing all the bits up in the air. That was just <laughs> wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, so um, what made you decide to actually use that method? I, w I have to say, I was totally and utterly flawed on the day because apart from you, I don't know anybody else who uses that particular method. I genuinely don't. And I've never seen it before. Somebody on that one of the six did that very same thing. And I was flawed. I couldn't believe your luck. I yeah. thought that you would be really unique and unfortunately <laughs> it kind of worked against you, didn't it? What, how, what you decided to do that presumably because it was different. Yeah, well, it, partly it was because it was different and partly because I couldn't decide what to paint. So doing the deconstruction pieces mean that I can paint more than one perspective on the day. So, you know, I, I can share more than one aspect of the day because the day was was amazing you know like I say I got on really well with the crew so I decided in the end to paint some of the crew which they said in all the years they've been doing it nobody had ever yeah. done before um I'm going to share with you a picture here just one second um I'm going to share with you this picture what I'm trying to do there we go oh this is the so, boom mic that was the sound girl. Yeah. Um, and then I also uh, did a picture. Yeah. So this was okay. some of the, the pictures that I, I, I did. So what I have is I've got the camera girl, I've got the boom girl, and some of the other artists that were, were around me. So I used these as pieces within my painting. Um, and I'd written down, oh, it was fair. Hannah and Jerry were the two um, crew that I, I drew. And there was a very surreal moment when I was drawing Jerry, the camera girl, um, and one of the crew was set, it was just so weird because they were filming me, drawing them, filming me, drawing <laughs> them. It was just that kind of perpetual loop. It was amazing. So, yeah, that was, Can that was we see you? Do you want to see Can the finished see one or do you want to see it in stages? Would you like the reveal? You want to see the finished yes, one? Okay. Absolutely, I'll see all of it. Well, I'll go. I've got the stages here. I'll go through those in a minute. But let me just start with Every, the. Everybody would love to see it. Oh, there they are. Look, there they are. Yes. There we go. So oh, we've wow. got the camera this crew, quite... we've got the boom girl and we've got all the views that I had. So that for me was lots of aspects of the day. Yes. So it's the day quintessentially all in one picture, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's a kaleidoscope of, of what happened during the day. Yeah. Yes. Oh, kaleidoscopes, good work. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yes. So would them. you like to see some of the um, yes. stages? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Let me, let me find them for you. Sorry, I'm flicking backwards and forwards here so that I can find all these images. Okay, so what I have... Oh, so this is where you started. These are the pieces you cut up. Yes. And you stuck them up. What do you stick them on with, Denise? I use Pritt stick. Okay. And I did lots of research because I do this as demonstrations to art societies and various other places where I do the demos. So yeah. obviously you have to be vertical. So it's no good using a PVA glue or something like that because everything just sort of slowly slides down the picture in front okay. of you. Yeah. Um, so I did a bit of research and Pritt stick is archival and acid free. So I thought, yeah, that's fine for me. Yeah, um, brilliant. So that's where I started and that's drawn back okay. in. And then you just start working back into it. So um, 
So then you start painting in between the pieces. So you start joining them back up again. I got you, yeah. And that's that's the process that I go through. I think I've got another one. Wow. Well, I've got this one, which is quite nice with our view. There you go. So that's that's oh, where that, I was that. sat. Um, so again, you can see what we were looking at. Um, oh, Denise, that's a lovely photo. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. And it just shows, you oh, know, yeah. how you start, how the process comes along. Um, and then I think we're almost at the the finished piece there from there on there's not a lot more to it until we actually have the completed piece so uh have i got one more almost done yeah just one there's a lot of work in that actually isn't there yes yeah a lot of work and a lot of thought to be honest and then yeah. um, they, they passed you by, didn't they? Well, they filmed me a lot. The, the judges came and talked to me a lot. Um, so, yeah, I had a lot of interaction, you know, with the crew and the judges. Um, and I successfully made the cutting room floor and wasn't, apart from in the background, I wasn't shown at all. So, you know, that's just the way it works. So what did you think about the wild card? The lady who won the wild card. It was a lovely lady. Her, her, she was her. sat next to me. She was really lovely. I quite liked what she did, but um, in fact, I can again, I can, I can show you some things. I've got some things yes, here. Yes, please. Everybody would like to see. Yeah. Right. So, what do I have? Oh, this is All right. Let's. So that's her when they were telling her that she'd won the wild card. Yeah. Um, I do have a picture of her image. I felt the only thing I felt, I loved what she did and I loved her style, but the only thing that I, I felt was it was such a bright and vibrant day that her picture perhaps was not as vibrant as it could have been. Okay. Right. So that's her picture, the, the wild card of my episode that won. I quite like some of the textures that she, she'd she done. To me, it was a little bit dour. It was such a bright, vibrant day. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. But I liked her mark making and her, her dribbles and runs and all the rest of it. What are your thoughts? I, I'm sitting here um, trying to... Now you'll hear from my silence that I have no idea how to express <laughs> what I think. And I and please keep it in because I mean there are all sorts of different views on art. Yes. Um, I like to understand what I'm seeing. And as you say, I I I love the, the orangey colour in it because of course you know me and you know my penchant for that colour. Yes. And I can understand that brightness, although that to me says autumn actually. Um, but I find that quite a depressing picture. Mm. And that's um, what I mean by dour. It was quite yeah. heavy. Everything about the day was joy, wasn't it? The fact yes. that you were there, that you, the sun was shining, you were having a lovely experience. And I don't get any of that from that picture at all. No, you no. Know? but you know, um, we're all different. It, that's just my opinion. So that, yeah. that's what it's all about. Um, yeah. uh, the, the, uh, what interested me greatly, greatly, and we'll get to it in a bit, was the fact that when the judges chose from their four, they chose four, didn't they, out of the six, and they Something had them like on that. easily yeah. in front of them. And when they had their four, one of the comments made from one of the presenters um, was, I suppose now you're going to surprise the public and choose the sensible picture. And that, that, yes, <laughs> that, that made me smile. Yeah. <laughs> that was interest. They usually go but for anyway, the wacky that, one, don't they? Yes, exactly. And I think on that occasion they didn't actually, which surprised everybody, but we're getting ahead of ourselves actually. 
Um, so we've talked through your process and was there um, a lot of hanging around while you were waiting for the judges to make their minds up and choosing their wild card and... The wild card one, not so much because they were walking around the whole time um, and then they just walked up to the lady at the end and just said, you know, that's it, you've, okay. you've won the wild card. So that bit, no, not so much. Um, then it was a case of us all clearing up and packing our stuff away. And we were allowed to go over and have a look at the um, pod artists who had, I think they had about half an hour left to go at that point. Um, so I went over and had a look and then they finished and then they put all their pictures on the easel. So I've, I can I can run you through the pictures on the easels um oh at, at the yes. end of the day let's let's have a little look and see if i can, can do, we do that. that now whilst we're yeah. and you I'd like you to tell us which one you liked and, and what you would have chosen and then we'll reveal the the winner afterwards for those people who haven't who didn't okay see so them. i'm sorry the picture i was you we weren't allowed to get too close to everything at this point no. obviously we, we, we were set back so this was the, the the younger girl who'd painted this strong, really strong shadow over the uh, top. This they was a collage trees, lady. Right? Yeah. Um, so I've got a so better picture of lady, She did what you were doing, didn't she? This, sort this of, is but she was, yeah, making more of a representational uh, piece yeah. than, than my kaleidoscope piece. Yeah. But she was using collage, which was unusual. Um, actually, yeah. I really liked her, her her piece. It's difficult to see it in the image, but it was um, there was quite a lot of depth to it. I really liked was, that one. Yeah, it was bright, wasn't it? And it yeah. it had that three D look. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, then this lady did the three on the the wooden boards. <sighs> I like now, the idea of it, but I'm I'm really split on this one. So am I. It's the red. Why red? Because red and green are complementary, but it's not the right red, is it? I don't know. It just didn't quite work for me. And I think why it didn't work was the concept of the three boards with the red is quite um, modern, quite out there. But the paintings yep. were really quite old fashioned. You know, traditional is probably a better word. Um, OK. So the paintings themselves were quite traditional. And I think weren't quite traditional enough you know they either needed to be really traditional or really modern but this really, I don't know it yeah. didn't quite work for me again we're all allowed our personal perspectives aren't we yeah yeah it's funny actually because this one caught we we let's tell everybody we all watched this together the day it, it was, was so funny the broadcast there were the six of us from the artist demo days and we were all messaging each other on Facebook Messenger and the thing that drove both Ali, um, Ali Board and myself dippy was the fact that the red, if it's going to be curved and rounded, it needs to be perfect. Because yes. all I can look at is the bits of green that go over the bits of wood. Yes. So you see what I mean, that the green trees kind of, you've either got to definitely place them over the wood but not make it look as though the brush strokes have gone awry yes and the red the curves on the red need to be perfect to make that work because yeah. otherwise that's what your eye sees not the painting yeah but yeah un very unusual very very unusual yes idea definitely. to be honest mm. okie dokie then we've got a couple oh, here yeah as you can see we had to kind of juggle around the um, crew to take our, our shots. So these aren't mm. overly clear. Again, quite traditional paintings. Um, the one on the left here, I liked the composition where they put the um, subject quite high up in the painting. So you had a lot of that reflection. You know what I'm like with water. I love painting water. It's lovely. Yes, it's lovely, isn't it? I like it. For, I love the colours. Yes, yeah. this is this, this was the day, wasn't it? Brightness, light, um, vibrancy. Yeah, it was a yeah, really vibrant, vibrant day. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, and then we've got these ones here at the end. So That's, this is again. This is the one that was right. I showed you right at the beginning. That might be a better shot yeah, of it. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the the other one there. It's a shame actually because the one on the left looks a lot 
um, more dull than it was on the day. Yeah, it? unfortunately, it, it's that situation of you, you get what pictures you can where you can, don't That's, you? And the camera's picked up on the light actually behind, isn't it? Yes. Um, but the, it gives everybody a jolly good idea of, of the pictures yes. that, um, yes. So sure in actual fact... Any, have I got any more here? Let me have a look. Hang on. Okay. There you go. That's a better shot there of it. it. And am I right in saying, Denise, that this was the winner? It was, yes. In the end, it was the winner. So um, I think they chose something that was beautifully painted um, and quite a... A traditional scene so yeah I was surprised when they went for it but delighted actually. But again going back to the one that you were talking about earlier on there they've chosen that the the view and put the building quite high up haven't they in the pictures yes. so that they've got the water and the tranquility of that water and the reflections. And I also so quite like the, the same little sort of flashes of the sort of limey green in the hillside in the distance that echoes yeah. that vibrancy of the day. Yes, and the way the sun was shining on the grass, yeah. Yes. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. Yes. So, um, what else do I want to ask you? The chosen pictures, what did you think? We've done that. I mean, what time did you actually get away in the end? You packed up before they made the choices with the judging. Yes. Um and so then... How, how did that work? How did, did you all um, file out? Was there problems with parking? You know what it's like after a concert in a state you home. <laughs> well, I have to say quite a lot of the wild cards just packed up and left. They didn't oh. hang around because the um, pod artists were still going. So they were still painting and they had a little bit more time to go before they finished. Um, although they have four hours painting time, they then have to stop to do a bit of an interview and they have to stop to do this, that and the other. So, you know, they, they didn't finish. I don't think they properly finished until 45 minutes to an hour after we'd been told to finish. Um, and then they put all of the um, paintings on the easel and that's where the photographs were taken from. And then they went and did their huddle and judging. So at that point, because I had a two and a half hour drive home, I thought, do I want to stay? Because they, they reckoned they'd be another hour before they announced the winners. Um, and I thought, do I want to stay and watch this? Which I partly did. And then I thought, well, actually, it will make the programme more interesting if I don't know what the outcome is. So you didn't know when you were watching nope. it that night with nope. all of us, you didn't know what the winner was. I left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, it, was, it was kind of one of those, do I, don't I, shall I, shan't I? Um, I think it was probably by this time about five. I'd been up since half four in the morning. I had a two and a half hour drive home. Do I wait another hour or do I see it on the programme with everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. So I oh, went. So we had the privilege doing it with you. That's yes. nice. Yeah. I have I to say, that's... I loved doing that watch. I, it's something I've not really done a great deal of until this recent programme. Um, recent times is watching tv programs with somebody else um, and having that mm. sort of a messenger discussion about the program so we've got our own version of i suppose um goggle box in a way <laughs> <laughs> just having our own discussion about the program as we're going along and that i have to say was lovely it was nice. This is um, something that um, we've got to thank lockdown for, isn't it, really? Yeah. Because that started before Christmas with you and I both being great fans of Strictly yes. and um, missing having other people to talk to about it afterwards. So we decided that we would watch Strictly together and uh, we, we duly did that every week and yep. sent pinged messages backwards and thought, what do you think of this dress? And that step was wrong. Did you see that out of time there? So we've been doing this on a couple of occasions, haven't we? To be and fair, I fun. think we were we were more, oh, that was lovely. I liked that. Doesn't he look good in that? I think that was probably more <laughs> <laughs> what we were discussing. Yes, than... We don't want to be seen to be gushing, do we? It's embarrassing. 
<laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was wonderful. Or, you know, I don't agree with what the judges said there or, you know, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I have really enjoyed that aspect of, of lockdown that has given us that conversation yeah. over a programme with somebody else who feels the same way about it as you do. And so when we go back to the TV programme on Sky Arts, being able to, you know, agree with the judges, disagree with the judges, all those kind of things as they're going through is 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 great fun, actually. Absolutely. And funnily enough, you know, that's something that we can thank again for this, because this is an idea that was born um, back in 2016. You had the idea and we've yep. never had the chance being too busy, too hectic, whatever. We've never had the chance to do this. And now here's the chance, isn't it? And, oh, isn't it um, wonderful? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful that yes. we can have these conversations and it feels the right time to be doing it? Yes, exactly. And, you know, with people sitting at home looking for things to um, give them the creativity and, and uh, to fill their days. We all yeah. know what that's like, don't we? And I also... And so this is I was just going to say, I, th I think um, that we're all, you know, a bit bored with the same old, same old. So to have something that is a little bit different, a different perspective on the world, a different conversation... Um, I think is is fabulous and that's why you know when we came up with the the traveling brush dippers um, you know we want people to dip into our conversation um, because I think it's important to have a different viewpoint. Yes and hopefully we can make it interesting to other people out there. So yes. that's basically the end of our very first episode um, yes. and it's been my pleasure to interview Denise today um, we'll be back in a fortnight and I'm going to be handing over to Denise so perhaps you'd like to tell us what we'll be doing next time Denise well on the next one I'm going to be interviewing Sharon and that's going to be all about the process of her writing her first book how that came about uh, what the process was and the book is called Sharon the book is called How to Draw Unicorns. Of course, everybody needs to know that. Who doesn't need a unicorn in their life? <laughs> so for now, everybody, we'd like to say thank you very much. And next time, do come back and dip into our conversation. <laughs>